large, secluded, cold. This is how most people would describe one of Russia's largest federal subjects. But does this description fit the place? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Irkutsk Oblast Ever heard of it? It's one of Russia's many federal subjects, sitting right in the middle of Siberia. That means that Irkutsk certainly has to endure the famed long Siberian winters we all heard about. Average temperatures hover around 0 degrees Celsius for more than half a year, but of course it can get a lot colder than that. In fact, the only month that doesn't usually have frost is July. But despite that, Irkutsk is an inhabited region where over 2.4 million people live out their lives. So, if this place sparks any interest in you, don't go anywhere, cause there's loads more to talk about. Ok, so let's take a look at the history of this place. Despite the harsh environment, people came to live here a long time ago. Think late Stone Age, so roughly 20 to 30 thousand years ago. There are lots of artifacts and archaeological sites to tell us about those people, but obviously much of their history has long been lost to time. However, we know a lot more about more recent times. Different Mongol and Turkic tribes were the ones who created the first statal entities in Irkutsk starting from the 2nd century BC. This situation remained unchanged until all the way to the 17th century when the Russian conquest of Siberia reached Irkutsk. Once this happened, Christian monasteries began to pop up and small European villages and towns appeared all over the place. As the Russian expansion continued eastwards, Irkutsk became one of the most important trade, political and transportation centers in the whole of Siberia. This is how gradually Irkutsk became firmly embedded into Russia. The capital of Irkutsk is the city bearing the same name. This is one of the largest cities of Siberia, with over 600,000 people calling it their home. It was named after the Irkut River, which means spinning in the Buryat Mongol language. As the main cultural hub of a vast area, Irkutsk is indeed one of the most beautiful and dynamic cities of Russia. In fact, the beautiful historical center of the city is on UNESCO's tentative list of World Heritage Sites. And it's this historic center that earned the city such nicknames as the Paris of the East, Siberian Petersburg or the Siberian Athens. And of course, to get to see this place, you can enjoy an adventure-packed ride on a train of the famous Trans-Siberian Railway. Not bad for a city in the middle of nowhere. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you something. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. Russian ethnics make up the majority of the population, but there are also large pockets of Mongol, Tatar and other indigenous ethnic minorities that roughly amount to 10% of the population. There is one group though that stands out a bit, the so-called Book Hollanders. These Hollanders, or Oledrzy, can be found in just three villages, Pitinsk, Sredne and Dagnik. Their history is quite interesting. They are the descendants of Polish-speaking peasants of the Mennonite or Lutheran faiths. As to why they are called Hollanders, it's because they were originally Dutch settlers that moved into Poland and later the Volhynia region of the Russian Empire. At the beginning of the 20th century, some quote-unquote Hollanders moved again in search of affordable land and some ended up in Irkutsk. Even though they have long lost their Dutch language and today mainly speak Russian, they are still considered by many as Germanic ethnics. The Trans-Siberian Railway isn't the only train-related highlight of Irkutsk. The Circumbaikal Railway is a thing you might want to check out. It's a historical railway that runs along the shores of the mighty Baikal Lake, giving you some of the most picturesque sights around this lake. It was once part of the main Trans-Siberian Railway until it was separated from it in the 1940s. Alongside the beautiful scenery and many natural attractions, there's one more thing you can behold on the Circum-Baikal Railway. The railway itself. 
There are 38 tunnels, 15 stone galleries and 248 bridges and viaducts on this piece of track that has no equal in the richness of engineering constructions in Russia and is one of the most complex railways on earth. Irkutsk isn't just an important city. It's also the source of thousands of Russian airplanes. The Irkutsk Aviation Plant is one of the most important aviation companies of Russia and it's been around since 1932, making it one of the oldest defense enterprises of the country. The plant has seen the production of many iconic Russian aircraft, including various models of the Tupolev, Antonov, Yakovlev or MiG brands and also civilian airplanes. The most modern fighters they produce today are the Suhoi Su-30 aircraft, a machine you definitely don't want to mess with. In all, since its establishment, the Irkutsk aviation plant has so far built over 7,000 airplanes. Before we end this video, it's time to get a sense of the scale of Irkutsk. 2.4 million people live here, which sounds like a lot, until you realize just how big this place is. It covers an area of 775,000 square kilometers, which makes it larger than Germany, Poland, Denmark, Belgium, all put together. Actually, we can still squeeze in Albania and have a bit of a leftover. What this means is that, on average, you'll find about 3 people per every square kilometer. But since most of the population is gathered around urban centers, most of Irkutsk is actually completely devoid of humans. Even so, Irkutsk is only the fifth largest federal subject of Russia. Be careful not to get lost in Irkutsk. Out of 775,000 square kilometers, 715,000 are covered by forests. Yes, 92% of Irkutsk is tree land. Add to this the Siberian winters and rich wildlife and you get a breathtakingly beautiful, albeit remote, region of Earth. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.